I was in Vegas. I was going to post that I was in Vegas um, on our story so our fans could come buy me a drink. <laughs> but, you know, the sucky part about going uh, changing time zones, you fall asleep. So every night, besides the one night, just in case y'all try to do some recon and figure out what happened, I was in bed by like 1230 every freaking night. Um, it was amazing out there. Some of the people I did meet out there listens. Uh, they told me shout out to the podcast. Shout out to y'all for listening. Nobody bought me a drink because, <laughs> you, you know, from the listeners. But uh, Vegas is always a good time. It was a great time. Kept my wedding ring going. If anybody asks, if you if a video come out of me, it's all fraud. Let me just put it like that. <laughs> it's AI. It's AI. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I hope I never have to use that, but I will. If it comes down to it, you know what I'm saying? Um, but we back. I know y'all missed us. Uh, these other pods is dry. Mike literally said we the best podcast in Charlotte. <clears throat> we are. I think I we're the largest podcast in Charlotte. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we got we, we got to be the largest. So I always wonder what States. does that mean? Like when now nah, I ain't talking about podcasts, but yeah. like what do people? What metrics do people be using it? I wonder is it oh, like they're, they're, they're on self. Grander. <laughs> That's all. Like, there's no real. Like, every car dealership, the number one car dealership in America, right? Absolutely. Every single one of them. So, a- like, no, nah, it's the same. Thing. You know what? That is a great way of seeing it. But I am. I do want to welcome everybody into the podcast. This podcast is going to be very interesting. Um, before we get started, though, August 11th, we will be at No Grease again. I think, let's see if somebody deleted my hand claps. Hold on. There you go. We will be at No Grease uh, Premium Outlets. Um, Hosting another Kevin Samuels inspired event. Yes. We want you there. Cocktails and conversations. Look at Mike knowing the actual wording and everything. Yeah. Look, Sheena, we love you. Just know that. She Good asked time. about you. It's Good time, man. We, I can't wait to be there. Uh, August 11th. I think it's going to start at 7. It's going to start. Bring y'all asses on time. Hey, um, yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all get there, man. Come come after work. Um, the no, no Grease Premium has a full bar. Absolutely. They have food. Food that you can work, um, you can get your hands manicure in the back. Like, yep, come on, like come, Fel- come out there, only. come out there, be on time. Absolutely. Ladies, you know, there's drinks there. Like, come through, and um, yeah, like this is the this is the beginning of I what's guess, to come. Yeah, our, our foray into media. Shout out to people that ask us what's your booking fees. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to y'all. <laughs> um, <laughs> figuring it out. Look. <sighs> Yeah, we're figuring it out. That's the biggest joke about this. Um, all right, let's do this because we had a whole show planned out for Friday and it didn't happen, but nonetheless, the internet keeps on giving. That's the one great part about the internet. Um, a man in China, he gets to the, he, he <laughs> let's start there, man. Drops his kid off. At school. Drops his kid off at school, does not come and pick the child up. Why not, Mike? Why did he not pick him up? Because he found out that the child was not his. What what's your thoughts on this? Okay, well, for one, I think the New York Post article is disingenuous. Oh god. A father drops off his son and does not pick him up. Like, well, I mean, technically he's not the father. Um Yeah, that was funny. But but or is he though, right? Like, you know Yeah, if your name on the birth certificate. I mean if, still you, there. if you raise the kids, man, like and, and you know, this this question has actually been trending for a while because that article came out probably maybe a month ago. Mm-hmm. Maybe two weeks ago. But uh, it's also been uh coming up in like black fathers groups. Uh, yeah. You know, if you find out the kids aren't yours, like what do you do with the kids? And I, you know, look, I'm not, I'm not going to blame guys. That's like, yo, it's not my kid. I'm, I'm getting out of here. Yeah. me. Right? I, I, I can't, I can't blame guys. Right. Because how many situations do uh, a man and woman separate? Or divorce or break up. You'll and, never see him again. And they never see the kids. <laughs> and they be they actually be his kids, right? So, never. You know, it's like and nobody don't you know what I'm saying? No one has ran to the front and said, Yo, that's wrong. Like these these children need to see their their parents, right? Absolutely. Write so, an article on this. Yeah, write an article on that. Like that never happens. So I look, I wouldn't do it, man. A, a child is an innocent party involved. They did Absolutely. not ask to be involved. If if I were to find out that a kid wasn't mine, like, yo, yes, their mother would have to answer to me. Absolutely. But I, I wouldn't sit there and blame the child. I really, really wouldn't. I, look, I know y'all call me mean, but I save it for stuff that you are. I, that <laughs> I save it for places that I really need to be mean. Okay. And, and being mean to a child isn't something that I would do. Yeah, this to me was like sucker shit. I don't know. First cuss word, uh, five minutes in. It was real like suckerish. And the reason why is because it's like, yo, you, you had this planned out. 
He didn't go home. They said he left the kid with clothes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That means you knew that when you dropped him off that morning, yo, I'm not coming I'm to not get coming you. I'm not coming to pick him up. And, and, and nobody knows? came to pick him up, right? Because yeah. they said he called his father, his brother. So everybody was in on it. Everybody was just like, yeah, the, the, the hell with that child. Yeah. And then the mother ended up getting, the, you know, come picking up the child later. But, you know, so taking that article, right, because that that was not a black man that did that. Nah. Black men are having the conversations. And, and, and I, you know, y'all know I like shoot bell to black men. But y'all okay. know that what I'm saying is not what the majority of black men are saying. Like, you know, a lot of men are in their feelings on that. And, and, you know, and I get it, right? Like, I'm not triggered. But I guess if you're the type of man that has experienced that. Yeah, yeah. I guess you would be a little bit triggered, so I can't. I can't even fault them for how they feel. But psy ops or psy posts, okay? Psy ops, psy <laughs> posts. Don't get me started. Had an article where they were saying that out of all men that have children, black men find the most happiness in fatherhood. Come on, man, talk about it. For Hold one, on. and the second thing that they found out is that black men that have children actually experience a higher level of happiness than black men without children. Mm. And, and I found that interesting. And that, that really wasn't the case in any other demographic. It was definitely not the case with women. Women evidently hate having children. Well, they say black <laughs> women feel the same. Yeah, black women feel the same between having kids and not having kids. Um, uh, let's see. Well, let's, let's read it so we don't, we don't even have to speculate. Uh, black men are happier. Black fathers are happier than black men without children. Black <coughs> women and white men reported the same amount of happiness, whether they had children or not. Uh, in American culture, happiness seen is highly valued, often used to measure social inequity. Mm -hmm. uh, studies have shown black Americans report lower level of happiness than their white counterparts. No shit in America. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious. However, there's limited research on whether the experience of being a parent among black Americans contribute to happiness. And that's the part that I found really, really interesting because there's no research on parenting especially with black people right absolutely and it's even less with black men so it, facts it, it's one of those things where it's like yo like this is not a fatherhood pod but we damn sure come on here and we will knock against any stereotype about black fathers because we know it's not true and, it, and and honestly if you look if you just look at the data the only people that really get like gets happiness from having children is the original man and, yeah. I, and, I, and, I, and I don't think that's weird. I think I think that's probably the way it's always has so been. So what you mean by original man? The African man, the oh. man, the, the man from the, the man from the continent. Like I'm trying to get you how the, Jess Hilarious got out of everybody. Yeah, like no, like <laughs> the, the father of creator. Yeah, I don't, I don't even. I do not touch that shit. <laughs> hey, sidebar, Jess Hilarious. You tried to get us to jump in with you, sis. Hey, we sat this one out, man. Um, Y'all, well, hell, they told us. They look. These women told us seven <laughs> years ago. That we need to sit our whatever phobic asses out. And that's what we've and, done. And look, and I've been doing that. And you know it's great. <laughs> Shout out to my brothers, that my homosexual brothers who've been DM DMing me. It was like, yo, they trying to reel y'all in. Nah, Don't fall for it. That's the that. other funny part about it. <laughs> when they hitting you up and they like, hey, black man, don't fall yeah. for this shit. This, mm -hmm. is a, this is a way. Uh, the only thing, because the first time a black man makes any comment mm -hmm. and he missteps at all. Oh, you hate your woman. The whole conversation is going to become about what that man said about that community. And we don't have a problem with that community. We quote Mo James Baldwin and we do Dr. King. Fuck out of here. <laughs> pretending that this shit is on us. Nah, y'all told us to mind our business. We so don't mind our we're business. just going to sit this one out. <laughs> um, mind our business. But yeah, I thought it was, I thought the article was super interesting. And you know, I, I had a lot of fun in my life before my kid got here. Um, but man, I tell you this, like I, I dropped my kid off at daycare on Friday, Friday morning before I fly out and Tuesday, I'll come back home and bro, just to see like his face when I walk into the yeah. door and him running up on me and him, like, if you say, I love you, he says, I love you too. And, um, for me, him just repeating and repeating and repeating i love you too i ain't even said i loved you yet but yeah. he just you know he's saying that and for those who not know my kid is he turns two in a few weeks but like just having that and him telling me he missed me and giving me hugs and just kept kissing me i'm like bro that happiness is nothing before that i was doing that was like yo you know and another thing is well i guess my kid cost me money too 
Oh, I don't yeah. know. What, I don't know which lifestyle cost me more. Probably this one. You know what I'm, saying? I'm still <laughs> probably, buying diapers. You know, probably definitely the kids. And like the end of the article, it says, "As as for men, being a parent did not make a significant difference in happiness of white fathers. However, for black men, having children was associated with higher level of happiness. This suggests that fatherhood holds a greater significance for black men than previously acknowledged." Who's been saying that for the past four years? I don't know. Maybe this podcast. I don't know. Maybe the Black Dads Club, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. <laughs> the study also <laughs> suggests black fathers may have a unique perspective on fatherhood that emphasizes the joys of being a parent. Mm. White people, welcome to Black Dads Club. Welcome. <laughs> Shout out to our uh, white listeners, black yeah. listeners, Hispanic well, listeners. Welcome. Welcome. We've only, we've only been shouting this from the rooftops ever since, honestly, since the CDC put that study out in 2014. So it's going on 10 years that we've been really trying to, you know, hey, this is how black men see fatherhood. This is how black men see their children. You know, randomly, it's a white dad who showed me, like, fatherhood could be, like, super fun. He was, like, the first person. Him and then you. Like, like and I put it like that, you know. Yeah. um, Because everybody else who I knew that was dad, like, my dad was very, like, my dad grew up in the 60s, 70s, whatever, right? So, and my dad also had me as a child. That's what I like to call it. He was 21. So Yeah, he, I mean, <laughs> our parents were stoic. Yeah, so, and it was like, you know, my other two two people I knew that had kids, they had kids at 18, so they wasn't happy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They, you know, they was tired. They still tired. You know? I maybe wait till you older to have kids. Yeah. <laughs> the key. But yo, one of my clients, man, um, I worked with his wife. His name is Jay and he was a white guy. And I, every time I took family pictures with them, he was as silly as his kids. Yes. And he was having just as much fun as his ki- kids. And like so much so that his wife used to be rolling her eyes. And she used to be like, he's like this every day. And he's a big dude. He's like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, yeah. You know, his kids are in his arms, and he was just running around. I was like, yo, I hope I'm that happy. Now, mind you, my dad is super, now that I'm at his house, yeah. he happy as hell. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. All right, let's get in these videos, man. Hold on. Wait, 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 which one are we going to first? Come on, man. Your girl, man. She over here, she the virgin, man. Oh. You, she, want, you want to start there? You know what? Let, let's start. The, I'll tell you, I tell you, you pull up the video, and let's read, um... Lola Olympian Lolo Jones mm. says being a 40 year old virgin has killed her love life. Duh. And now she's turning to IVF to become a mom. No, her jaw's tight. <laughs> and hands. So Lolo Jones is a 40 year old virgin. Now, you know, so, so two things, and this is not on the board, but she says she's turning to IVF and you know, Ebony K Williams. Now this, this is from July 14th. So that's what, mm-hmm. two weeks ago. Yeah. Ebony K Williams, I think last week had made the comment on her show that that's a route that a lot of um, black women should take, mm. right? Is to not, you know, not be wives, but become single parents. Single parents. I was about to say something else. I helped you. I Thank saw you. it. I saw it. Boy, I saw it. <laughs> right? God said, yo, hurry up. Hurry up. So, you know, this, this is becoming a route. Now, Lolo Jones, Ebony K. Williams, two different sides of the totem pole when it comes to mm-hmm. what these women are doing. Ebony K. Williams is getting bills paid. Lolo Jones is saying, I am a virgin. But before we talk about what we're going to talk about, play the video of another virgin. Amen. And this, this, this shit is funny. Hold on. This is funny. So I meet a lot of women, and some of them are embarrassed because they're edging on into their 30s or even later than that, and they are still a virgin. For myself, I am actually still a virgin. I was promiscuous in my past, yeah. but I would do wait, everything. Wait, wait, what she say? What? Hold on, so hold on, hold on. Still actually- what we're not going to do is let her scroll past that, because I didn't I didn't even watch this video. She said, I was promiscuous in my past. I told you them jaws be hurt. Come on, come on. I man. was promiscuous in my past, mm. but I would do everything but. She, the so I still she said, okay. am a virgin. Even so she is a virgin. Yes. She would do everything but. Ain't no in blowjobs. <laughs> <laughs> Let's tell the truth. All right. So, all right. So, I think this question rolls into the body count question, right? So, obviously, mm. if you're a virgin, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I don't have a, a, a body count. Okay. Let, let's be. So, for one, right? Mm. If if I look at Lolo Jones. Okay. And she tells me, like, yo, I'm 40 and I'm a virgin, right? Okay. As a guy. Okay. And listen to this woman that said, hey, I was promiscuous in my past. I was out there. I would do anything but. Anything but. So when I meet, so as a man, right, when they, when you meet a woman, ladies, listen to this, right? As a man, when you meet a woman and she says, hey, 
Um, I'm a virgin, right? Yeah. As a man, now it goes. The first thing that goes through a dude's head is like, "Are you a virgin in the sense of purity, or are you a virgin in the sense of ain't nobody penetrated your vagina?" Uh, as a man, first thing come my mind. I just think, damn man, I don't. <laughs> It's a look. It's a hard question, but well, we, didn't, I, I, we didn't make this shit up. We did not. I remember one time I was talking to a girl, and she told me she was a virgin, and we were like, well over twenty one. And I own. It was the way she acted. I'm like, you have not done anything. You have not. And then we tried something one time, and she was so inexperienced. I said, this bitch has not tried it. Okay. So all right. So in the sense of like purity, right? So like that. Look for one. Uh, so here's my thing. Don't make it about your identity. Like, if a woman is a virgin, I don't need to know she's a virgin, right? Like, if, Absolutely. If, if purity is a thing for you, if your, you know, your beliefs is something for you, if you really want to save and gift yourself to your husband, I'm going to respect that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to not gonna come in and just be like, nah, you're going you to give me them draws. Like, no, that's that's not happening. I'm going to respect it. I am yes. a gentleman. Yeah. Right? But if you come <laughs> to me and, like, within, within three conversations, you're like, hey, guess what? I'm celibate. Or, hey, guess what? I'm a virgin. I'm going to be honest. It's going to turn me off. Yeah, well. Um, this conversation haven't gotten there yet. Absolutely. You know, it's funny. I was talking to a girl that we know. <laughs> Can't say her name. <laughs> um, and she was going on a date, and I was like, yo, that's going to be dope. And she was like, I don't think so. And she was like, what? She said, yo, men don't understand that so many men on the first date expect sex, and they will do whatever's in their power to hide it. And when they get done with that first date, they're like, yo, let's have sex. And she said, one, um, she wasn't a virgin. She was a, a, a celibate. Yeah. And she said, yo, I've had dudes block me after that moment. But, okay, so, all right. One, and I've heard that from multiple chicks. Okay, so here, here's here, here's problem number one. <laughs> I, I can tell them exactly where they're going wrong on that. Right? Okay. They're going wrong because they're trying to get to the date, right? Because okay. if, you don't, if you don't spend money on me, you're wasting my time, right? Mm. What, what, are you, what, are you, what, like, what are you trying to, to get to? They're trying to get on that date. It's not look, man. There's nothing wrong with just communicating with somebody, talking to somebody, and getting to know somebody. And and, and like, so I was at I was, I was out at a bar. Um, this this uh, lady was sitting next to me, and of course she starts talking to me. I hate talking at bars, but I can tell she's interested. So anyway, so all right, so it's like all right, we communicate, and then you know she gets into this conversation like, are you dating? You know whatever, blah blah blah. You know, are okay. you dating? And then you know I'm just like, you know, she's, she recognized you from the pot. <laughs> oh, not. <laughs> so then she's like, so I so I asked her. I said, okay. I said, so let me ask you a question. Oh gosh! I was like Mike, one of those. I was like, what? I was like, at the point, the place that you are in your life right now, you okay. meet a guy, you like a guy. What are you looking for, right? And she goes through, you know, oh, you know, I was married. I'm used to waking up with somebody every oh, morning. Gosh. She was like, uh, you know, I expect amazing sex. You know, I want somebody that I could go places to do all these things with. So, she, and she goes through just laundry list of things that she expects, you know, this man to provide for, right? Mm-hmm. So, and I tell, her, I said, okay, I said. You just went through a whole list of things that you want a man to do for you. I said, you have not mentioned one thing that you are going to do for this man. <laughs> right. I said, you haven't mentioned one thing. Okay. That, that you are going to provide. You, you just gave me a laundry list of things that you want a man to do. Right. Without ever reciprocating what you like, how you want to provide. And I was like, and, and honestly, I was like, you know what? I said, it's not even, it's not, it'd be unfair for me to be like, that's just you. I said, that's every time I've ever asked a woman that question. Right. And I and I was like, I don't I don't date men, but I said men probably do the same thing. And I was like, that's the problem with dating right now, is that everybody is showing up saying, What, what are you, you what are you gonna do for me? What can you right? do for me? And yeah, yeah. women feel like that's with sex, men feel like that's with money. dates. Oh. So why don't money? So it's like, yo, so like why don't we just take the time to like stop jumping into sex and spending money? Like, why don't we take the time to get to know it? Like, yo, is sixty days too long to talk to somebody? Nah, but you know, the joke is we get the we get the videos. We got the mom who was in the car, the video that uh was put in our group chat of the mom in the car on TikTok, and she ain't the only mom. And she's like, yo, if for me to be interested, I need a babysitter. I need a meal to go home. And th- let me tell you something. These videos of that, yeah. the ladies are not smiling in them. No, they're that, not. And that's because they're, they're hungry and they're they're broke. So, no, they're not smiling, and they don't need to be dating. They need to be getting their shit together or building a relationship with the man that you let knock you up and you're ovulating. Bruh, there's nothing wrong with being friends with the person you let have raw sex with you. 
<laughs> not, not he, might, he might still got access to it though. It, it, it's nothing wrong with being friendly. <laughs> like, of course you're frustrated when you don't move 500 miles away from your support system. Yeah, I was but, watching Judge Matha. This lady was in there complaining that she's a single mom of two struggling. Yeah, and she I, was I, lending out two thousand dollars to a homegirl. Of and, course you're struggling. Like, <laughs> Judge Matha was like, "Why would you ever do, that? dude? Like, the, like the, dude, the moment my marriage was falling apart, and I was like, "Yo, I don't have my sisters and brothers here. My parents aren't really that close. I like, was here. there's no way <laughs> you y'all didn't have kids yet. Oh, you yeah. know, I'm like, there's no way in hell." I'd make another kid, right? Mm, it was, like, it was like, there's no yeah. way because I don't have a support system. Guess what I'd be doing if I had two baby mamas? Bruh, crying. Oh, well, I, I don't have one. I don't have one baby mama. I have an ex-wife. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. For, for audio effect, right? <laughs> if I had two baby mamas, right? Imagine how I'd be struggling. Yeah. So it's like, as guys, yo, like, stop to, to, to your homegirl's point. We got to stop rushing into sex. Like, yeah. dude, on the first date, if you if you really want to have sex with a woman on a first date, you're really gonna to have to be interesting. You're mm-hmm. really gonna to have to smell really really good. You're really gonna to have to be really really funny, and you're gonna to have to really make her like you. And you know what? At the end of the night, she might she might let you she might let, might let you smash. Yeah, but she's probably ovulating, so you probably want to wear a condom. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, Before you get that congratulations of oh, we've only been dating for three months and we're pregnant. Yeah, look, and y'all, <laughs> never mind. I'm gonna let y'all live, man. Um, all right, so we had some big news come out for the la- the last couple weeks. Let me tell you something. Nothing has been more amazing watching black women turn on Suki, um, and her turning on black women as well. <laughs> let me just that whole situ- situation was great, um. And then we have Carly Russell. And, you know, I want to send my thoughts and prayers to Carly Russell's dad and her (laughs) ex-boyfriend. Because, bro, nobody ain't talking about y'all. Her dad would just, dude, he was just in there just shaking his head. And, you know, every male group I was in was like, yo, (laughs) everybody, I know she lying because look at her dad during this press conference. I wrote on Facebook, um... To go on the Today Show and say, give me privacy. And her mom shaking her head no and saying, yes, there's a, you know, a doctor out there. Um, if you do not know, Carly Russell uh, claimed to have seen a toddler on the side of a highway. Um, this lead led on to like a two day manhunt looking for her because she was supposedly kidnapped. Um, everybody all the way up until like Cardi B had reposted this. Yeah. And, you know, it became this thing of um, I actually know the girl who. Cardi B reposted of like Cardi B reposted this girl's yeah. post about it. Cause this girl was going in uh, funny enough. I think that girl deleted her Instagram cause she was going in when it was for the two days and I felt bad for her too. It, it, she was going in on Carly or she was going no, in on going Carly in being on lost being and lost. And she was, gotcha. she was like going so hard for it. And um, at first look when, when the police chief is now coming in suits to the press <laughs> conferences, he knows something that we don't know. Now, Carly, Carly, Carly. I I don't even know what to say. I really just want to say I feel bad for her dad and boyfriend. I do feel bad for her her father for sure and her boyfriend. But a lot of the, a lot of these behaviors are probably you know attributed to the fact that I mean let, let's be honest. Do we think that Carly Russell was ever accountable? You know for most things in her life, like probably not. You know, she probably was not the, the the one that when she got in trouble was like, yo, it's my fault. I'm going to take full accountability for it. <laughs> She's probably always been, you know, the dantly, you know, little angelic Carly that never had to take accountability for something. And just psych, psychotic behavior, right? Yeah. It, I mean, that's what we have to call it. Like, you literally made a story up. And went along with it for 48 hours. <laughs> like, Bruh. So, you know, th- like, this is insane behavior. And I think... I think Carl, Carly is, is she, is it symptomatic or is she emblematic? Like, I don't even know at this point in society, but she is almost like, it's like what, how we treat women in society now, right? Like, well, like, we know, it, when women say, like, you know, yeah, I'm pregnant, but then, like, they never have a baby, right? Mm. Or, or, you know, of like, oh, you know, tell a guy they're pregnant to get money for an abortion, mm-hmm. but, you know, they're not ever really pregnant. Or Absolutely. they'll say they, they actually will be pregnant and say, send me money for an abortion, knowing that they're never going to talk to this guy or let him be a father, and then they don't get the abortion, right? Yep. Like, all these behaviors are, they're not really different from Carly outside of the fact that everybody else that have these behaviors aren't calling 911 first and playing missing for, for several days. 
But like, what guy have, what guy have not had a conversation with you know a young lady and then she just missing, right? Like yeah. you talking to her and then she, she just goes right. You call her, no phone pick up, yeah. right? Is she home? I don't know. Like, like how many guys have dealt with that? That's probably like every guy. Yeah. Right? Like, so the difference here is the commitment of Carly <laughs> of calling nine one one and creating a side narrative. So why you think her dad went on the Today Show knowing that his daughter was lying? Because I, I think I think as any good man that you're going to support your wife <laughs> publicly, you're going to support your wife, you know, and privately you will discipline your wife. Right? The same thing we talked about, Darius. Yeah. Thank y'all for correcting me that Darius is not Darius the football player. I'm sorry, my bad. <laughs> Retraction on my part. Hey, when I when, when I am wrong in this part, I will say that. Not me. <laughs> but I think that's part of it, right? It's like yo, it's like. Like how would how would her mom had looked if he wasn't there, right? Yeah, that, that, that would was look a bad. single black mom narrative. That even though she's not a single black mom, but then we look at it and then we criticize it. Like if I'm being honest, right? Mike from Black Dad's Club would definitely be like, "Well, she has a dad. Why the hell he isn't there?" Yeah. So it, it, I, I think it is the support, and I think I don't know if I could do it, dog. But see, here's the thing, though, right? Like you have to avoid that point of view, right? Like the biggest thing is. Like, we just listen to old girl. She's, she's getting married. Those are Christians, by the way. That virgin video, like, they're making a big really? deal. Really? Yeah, they're, they're, like, he's like a pastor, and she's like an evangelist. Oh, he gonna get it. But he so, like, like so, so here's the thing, though, right? Like, if, I, if I'm if I'm dating a woman, and she has a a past, right? Not even sore it, like, not even, like, but it's just something where it's like, yo, I wouldn't want everybody to know that, right? Yeah. Like, it's something about, it, like, yo, I don't want everybody to know. So it's like, as a woman, as what I'm asking a woman as a man rather is like, Hey, don't embarrass me. Right. Mm-hmm. Like you can't, you can't dictate what embarrasses me and what doesn't embarrass me. And I think him going on there, I think that's just his support. But I, but just looking at his face, looking at his body language, looking at him shaking <coughs> his head. Absolutely. I don't think, I don't think he wanted to be there, but as a good husband, you kind of have to be. Or you tell your wife, we're not doing this damn interview. Or, or you, know, you tell, Exactly. That's the only thing I kept thinking yeah. of because when I watched it, I was like, yo, something don't feel right. He's not saying much. Um, of course, if me and my wife were speaking, right, I would be doing most of the speaking. Uh, public speaking, I do better than my wife, so to speak, um, because I talk a lot. However, if y'all put us in a networking situation, my wife will work the hell out of a room and get whatever she needs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I do terrible with that. But, like, I know, but one thing I, I just couldn't, it, you know, when everything happened, I was like, damn, I wonder her dad was looking like a goof up there on a Today Show. And, plus, you know, they might have looked at it as like, yo, we're going to have to give some of this money back. And if Today Show saying, yo, we got 50 grand for you to come <laughs> sit here. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. apparently, they trying to figure out how they're going to give back the 62 grand that she raised. They said that money gone. I bet it is gone. That money gone. That, it, especially because a lawyer is probably like, yo. Oh, yeah, the lawyer probably would get 25 of that easy. Easy. Uh, speaking of Russell's, <laughs> your favorite guy, man. Hey, look, I you know, what's funny about Russell Wilson is the trajectory of Pastor Mike Will enjoyance of Russell Wilson. So I know Russell Wilson from him playing baseball, playing at NC State. I wish he had came down to South Carolina. He ended up in Wisconsin. Rumor has it that he wanted to be a game cop. I've I've liked the guy as a football player forever. Right? Okay, the dislike for for Russell honestly did not come <laughs> until he does passive aggressive shit, right? And I I equivocate passive aggressive at the same level of petty. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, they say so. So when so when Future made the made the the sound bite, you know, out in the field, fuck Russell, right? He's a rapper. It was a shot, right? Yeah, it was petty so too. It was petty, right? Yeah. And then for Russell, for, you know, two days later to have future son. That was a good throwback. In the field, shot. like I was like, "Yo, future got fight after this." One. Yeah, yeah. But you know, but like, but that's passive aggressive, right? Yeah. Because you're not, you know, you're not going directly back at him, right? You're you're pretending like I'm being this good guy, yeah. Doing something, but but in real, in actuality, you're taking a shot. Yeah, but we knew he was taking a shot. Yeah, we. But see, every see, but that's the problem. Everybody knows he's taking a shot. And like we just talked about, you know, Miss Russell, Carly, right? That behavior becomes normalized. And like now it's like, yo, you're expected to accept, you know, this crazy behavior. With Russell, it's, it's become, he does passive aggressive things that, re, that real men, right? As women like to say. But, you know, like guys who are actually, you know, real. Like, you know it's something, right? Like, you, 
<laughs> when I was younger, right, you'll see two guys that are getting in a fight, right? And, and <coughs> to the outside world, it looks like they got in a fight over something stupid, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, they got in a fight because, like, you know, you took, you know, his his soda, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the truth of the matter is, like, you no, know, it's not the fact that he took a 12-ounce uh, coat, right? Yeah. The fact of the matter is, you knew it was mine. I said it was mine. You blatantly just disrespected, disrespected me. what yeah. the hell I said, right? And then, and, and like, they actually get into it, right? They didn't get into it because the 12-ounce coat was drank by your roommate, you know, on campus. They got into it because you disrespected me. And I think, like, with Russ, this, this joyous thing of, like, oh, every time he does something, it's genuine and it's out of love. It's like, yo, we, we saw it. I didn't feel fuck Russell, petty. <laughs> Russell was in the sun in the field with this man's son talking about I love being a dad, right? Passive aggressive. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's the same thing. Who you think is more wrong? Uh, Future or Russell? You know, I mean, I I I think I think they're equally wrong. Right, okay, so they're equally wrong today because the kid is damn near a teenager, isn't he? How old is boy? Now that boy look like he's about ten. Yeah, that's what that's like, only like I, five eight, ain't he? I don't yeah. So you know, yeah, so I mean, I, I think it's, I think it's both of them. I think in the beginning, I, it is the man's job to cultivate the relationship between if you marry a woman that has a child, right, and she doesn't have a relationship with that child's father. It is it is on you if they, if or she don't have a good relationship. Let me yeah, like that. it is on you to be like, hey, send everything through me. You know what I'm saying? Like you and I can work together as men because at the end of the day, this is your biological child. But if she say no, then you back to where Russell at? Well, who how, how she how she gonna say no? Yeah, uh, she going to say no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I don't want you talking in the future. I yeah. handle this. No, no, you, not not at, not in my house. Not anymore. Well. Not anymore. Like, yeah, you could do all that in your house. But once we get into my house, no, you don't You don't have that option anymore. Whatever I say is going on in our home, I'm looking at the greater picture here. Because if not, you do end up in a situation to where a dude throws a rap lyric out there or, one, you marry a rapper's, you know, baby mama, and then he throws a rap lyric out there, which you should expect when you marry a rapper's baby mama. Absolutely. And then you know, and then you're like, "Well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hire a photographer to be petty back." Oh, you know, Sierra took that picture. That was a good picture. I think I'm a photographer nah. took that picture. <laughs> As a photographer, I was looking for a high quality uh, version of it for the artwork, and I got a cell phone resolution. So oh, okay. Like, so yeah, that, yeah, but I mean, but still, like, like all that is just it's so petty, man. It's like, yo, and I wouldn't want my child being raised in an environment where it's like, yo, you're picking up those behaviors. Me and my son had to have a conversation about respect last night. Mm. Um, I pretty much made me be like, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I want any more kid. So, <laughs> and, then, and then at the end of the night, like he, he like cleans up his room, you know, remakes the beds and does, you know, folds my clothes. And then, you know, I walk in and he's doing all this and he's like, dad, I want, I want to let you know, I respect you. And then I'm just like, damn, man, why do kids do that? They go from, they go from like little, little shitheads to like, you're like, man, you are so awesome. Yeah. Um, in in an in a hour span, we call my little man uh, a sour patch kid. Because <laughs> like, it's like, yo, he's so sour. He yeah. would literally walk up to my wife, uh, swing at her, and miss on purpose. Yeah. And if she don't pay attention, he goes in and clocks her. And then he asks her if she's okay and can he give her a kiss. <laughs> it's literally like a light bulb. You know, um, everybody know where I stand at. <clears throat> Let me clear out my voice for this. <clears throat> Free bands, FBG. <laughs> they call me Pluto outside of Coke. I stand with Future. <sighs> In standing with Future, I will say this. This man is petty. He will throw more shots. He will show up for Cam Newton at Russell Wilson's football game in the championship game and say, hey, I'm going to only play Future Why Russ is out there practicing. Future will, you know, even in the song, right? Uh, he named out Scotty Pittman. He named out uh, uh, what's Steve Harvey, uh, Lori. He named out all the girls' name who recently having breakups or issues or just in the media, or whatever. For they, they, you know, whatever's going on. But future is future. You know, I laugh at Russ because, you know, in 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 watching everything, I watch us get tagged and stuff. Shout out to Daryl Dash. Yeah, uh, tagging us was like y'all got to talk about this. And there's like this obsession, and it's so weird, with black women oh, being hurt as moms. Going there. Hold on, let me make sure I clear this up. That's going there. There's an obsession with black women being hurt as moms, uh, and leaving the streets to be rescued 
by the man they would have never known or dated in the past. And Sierra is that case in point. And I love the young lady who was on our story because I, I asked a question um, on our last episode and I love the response we got outside of this young lady. Um, but I love the response of, yo, it is true. We do not uh, promote healthy father, married fathers to our young black boys. No, we don't make it attractive. We don't put it in the forefront. We don't uh, put it on TV. You know, one of the funny shows me and me and my wife used to watch. We used to watch Judge Mathis show. Yeah. Right. There's no drama. At all. Yeah. It's not that cool. You know what I'm saying? I remember back in the day when um, they asked Bobby, um, B- not Bobby Brown, what's my name? Uh, my Bobby V. They asked him, uh, why haven't he done more reality shows, right? This was a long time ago. He said, well, uh, one of my parents is a doctor, the other one's a lawyer. Uh, when they came and met my parents, they said, never mind. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting how we have those situations. Well, I mean, so I don't know if you saw what I posted in the story on um, on our page on Instagram, but it went through, like, all the executives for the five major music companies, right? Okay. And, and when they go through all the executives, it's probably, like, it's probably like 50 executives, right? Uh-huh. There's two black men mm. out of the 50 executives, mm-hmm. right? Now, here's the thing, right? They're, they're black men, right? They're probably not even African-American men, right? Mm. Which is crazy. Because, and, and, look, I'm not going to do diaspora wars. But they do. They, they, it is time for a delineation because the the, the Ochos, the, the Peter, the, uh, no, the John is out there in California. Yeah. Too many people that have never experienced an African American experience are speaking about what blacks, traditionally African Americans, have gone through. Yeah. And so there, there there has to be a delineation, right? And what I go, I say all that to say, as African Americans in this country. We know, right? Like we start, we started with an article that says, "Yo, black men get more pleasure and joy out of fatherhood, right? Yeah. Instead of investigating why is that, and maybe we should, you know, find a way to extrapolate this across all men, right? It just goes unstudied, which is why our pods, like our pod, we're really trying to say, hey, we, no, we're we're bigging up in black men. Yeah. Like it's called Black Dads Club, but we did that so black men that have kids that are dads will follow us and I, listen to the pod. And so my thing is. We have this obsession with hurt black women. That is an obsession of America anyway. Showing hurt, whether it's fighting, crying, uh, going through the struggle. They literally promote the black truth, woman. You said what you said about Judge Mathis? It, it was it's no born. Drama, right? It's yeah, born. it was born. So, but here's the thing. So we promote that to black women, right? Yeah. And then there's this thing of like, oh, rescuing. Because every love story has hurt and somebody being rescued, yeah. right? So cool. We get that. And so... My thing with Russ is, and I don't have a problem with Russ. I don't care. I think he he does petty stuff, and I think that's what happens when your wife made you cool. I'm gonna call it how I see it. Your yeah. wife made you cool. I mean, he, nobody loved Russ when before, when he was married from his um NC State sweetheart. Yeah, nobody. 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 Like, no, well, men did for football reasons. Yeah, but like this this Saint Russ and Saint Sierra. Yeah, that that, that, that didn't, didn't exist. That didn't and so exist. there's this obsession with stepfathers that I just find interesting um, because even in the video of me saying, why don't we promote this? There's a young lady saying, yo, because y'all hate on Russ. And I'm like, damn, sis, you mean you skipped all the successful <laughs> married black men that are fathers. And you said, no, 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 protect Russ at all costs. Well, and that, that shit is so just weird to me in society. yo. The rich simp is the ideal man. Absolutely. Like that, like the rich simp is the ideal man, and it's even better if you can have a rich cuck. Like that, yeah. that's even better, right? Like, like if if you could go do what you want to do and your man never leave, like there's nothing better than that. That sounds cool. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, it is fun, right? But it's like you know, it's like, but it's like the rich simp, right? Is like the biggest thing, right? You know, yeah. like who who wouldn't want that, right? And then, but now it's even it's it's, it's becoming even worse. It's like. Yo, I want to be able to do whatever I want to do, right? Like, like this dude is listening to his wife like, yeah, I'm a virgin, but I did everything else. Like, please do not go on camera and be like, I got 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 5,000 with 50 dudes, and I enjoy (laughs) anal, but my my pussy is unpenetrated. Like, don't say that shit out loud. Keep that shit (laughs) between us. I don't want, like, don't tell nobody that. (laughs) Hey, man. But that's cooking, though, right? Like, Like, when you do that to a man publicly... And 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 then you be like, yeah, ain't that right, babe? You know, like when you do that to a man publicly, you are you 
you you are embarrassed him, and some men are into that, right? Yeah. But all men are not into that. Well, he probably took her to the club, and she hugged a bouncer too long. <laughs> hey, but but you know what? If if, if he married, if, if he's marrying a woman, you know, and, and y'all got look, uh, I repost a video on. A, matter of fact, it's on it's on our Twitter. If you go to our Twitter, you can you can see the video. <laughs> and, and Mike runs our Twitter. <laughs> Mike be on there wilding the fuck out. I'll be like, God dang, I got. It. I was like, I'm putting that out now, so when we get called out later by CNN or somebody, and they ask about tweets, you got to talk to Mike. I should like get a blue check and put like a parody account and be. I'll run that one. Have you seen Mark Lamont Hill and old girl uh, going back and forth? They've been arguing all week. Who Mark arguing with? Not Mark always stay arguing with somebody. Yeah, I called his out ass out on Twitter though, because I'm like, he Yo. said some dumb shit like a week and a half two ago, and I I, I just left it alone. Well, it was it's weird, man. Um. Let me go see what Mark Lamont. He some chick who spoke at the RNC and they've been talking about her educational status. But you know, my issue with Mark Lamont Hill, I was I was I wrote him and said it, and I know he didn't see it. But I was just like, yo, man, it seems like you have no problem with just shooting at black men and excusing uh excusing or removing accountability from black women, which it's like, damn, bro. Like, I mean, that, that's a system though, right? Like, it is a system, man. Yeah. And I I, you know, that hit me, and you know, sometimes I don't want to look at it as far as like, let me put it like this. Sometimes we can ignore some shit that black men do. Yeah, It don't have to be every time a black man does something. We have to bring it to the front. We got to call him out. We got to put his feet to the fire. We and can it's like, ignore it. Absolutely. Like it's sometimes, it, just like how y'all ignored right. Jonathan Majors <laughs> when he found, y'all found out he didn't do what, you know, we all thought, me included, thought he did. It's yeah. like, yo, hey, ignore it. He set free. Now he looking very desperate with Megan Good. He, I, I need my man to figure it out. Um, before we get out of here, he, man, he, he, he and his sisters. That's his problem. Poor guy. Yeah, he do got the look. Well, we know he do it, but he got the look like yo. Thank you for the help. How much is Marvel paying you? Now, if if Megan Good is in the next Marvel movie, I'm gonna lose my shit. Hey, you know, but that'd you, be a good deal for her. Yeah, you know, you know, she was paid. She looks good too. She do look good. She, she, she left look, her pastor. Yeah, I, 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 I wasn't messing with Megan Good. Why not? She played the same role? Yeah, I don't think she acted. She looked good. <laughs> All right, think. next she, topic. She is gorgeous, though. She is gorgeous. It, look, she is fine, man. Look, man, shout out to Megan Good. Um, You had an interesting topic on Ildris' Elba. Oh, yeah. So we, we, we're going to leave here on this today. So Il, Ildris' Elba, I don't, know, I don't know if you guys check this out. And you know, honestly, this is why we got to do the lives on the weekend. Guys, I promise y'all, we're going to get that stream yard up at some point so y'all can come in and like politic with us on Saturdays. But um, so Ildris, <laughs> poor guy, Ildris walks out. Ildris said he walks out of a uh out of a club. Hold on, let me see where he's walking up. Um, yeah. Where do you want? Yeah, he walked out. He uh, he intervened. So he wasn't walking out of the club. Excuse me. Okay. British actor 50 recalled things escalating after he tried to intervene in an argument between a couple outside of a club. This is Ildris speaking. I nearly lost my fucking life. After attempting to stop a man threatening his girlfriend outside of a club, mm. a guy was wailing on his missus, screaming in her face. I should have did this in a British accent. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fucking kill you. And Turn so it on, on like how Drake do. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I come around and go, look how beautiful she is. Why would you talk to a beautiful princess like that? Oh, he, he had goofy. All right. Yeah, yeah. he did get goofy. He, got goofy. he pulled out a gun, stuck it right in my face and goes, you talking about my girl? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking idiot. It'll just you asked for that, bro. Like you do you know, we always say that men like fall for, for beautiful women, right? Mm-hmm. So imagine how beautiful this woman had to be for Ildris Elba, right? Iconic sex symbol of the world mm-hmm. to be like, hey man, stop, stop, stop beating on your missus. Or she could have been ugly, you know, he just trying to make him feel better. Nah, he just ain't doing that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, with that being said, this is a very, very important question here. Go ahead. And I want and I want everybody to listen to the pod right now to like be honest, right? Okay. If you see two people going at, at it in a domestic, you know, situation, absolutely. Do you intervene? Are they black? <laughs> That's a good question. That is a va- that is a valid question, my friend. Yeah. All right. So if they're if they're not black, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that we're not intervening at all. Nah, I'm ignoring. Uh, <laughs> I ain't, I ain't trying to be funny. And it's not and it's not being racist at all. It's, it's not at like all. You're, you're putting yourself at even a greater damage. I'm, you know? Yeah, because yes. I I, I feel you. comfortable around black people. I feel like black people when they see me are comfortable. So it might be like, hey, bro, step off, leave me alone. Or like, hey, um, my man, 
My is, man. I'm going to put a gun, but I ain't going to pull it. Man, my man, what, what man? What, come on, bro. But you know what? Um, Also, let's say if I see a woman getting abused, I'm calling the police. If they're white, I'm just automatically, hey, I see such and such on 37th and 49th. There's a fight between a man and woman. On I'm calling the such. police. If yeah. they white, I'm straight up just calling the police. Um, and y'all know why. Now, if they're black, and let me tell you something. Um, we've talked about this plenty of times. Where my studio is at, it's in the hood. Uh, <laughs> and I've had to call the police over here sometimes. I'm always very, very, look, if we ever get big enough and they start releasing police tapes, <laughs> y'all going to laugh. Um, but I am so clear yeah. on black people not having weapons. Yeah. Uh, black people... If they are doing drugs, if they have it on them right there, I am very clear on that because, and I always let people know these uh, black people are not threatening. Yeah. Because I don't want the sh- cop to show up already. Already, on team, you know, on expecting. Team. Yes. So if I'm, and so the reason why, and I don't mean to seriously say, if I'm walking by and I see a black dude going in on with his girl, I'm looking, I'm paying attention. If I see too much, first of all, I'm not approaching at all. I'm yeah, not yeah, going to yeah. fucking lie to y'all. Yeah. And I hate to be that way because I have, I've heard too many stories of, Yo, you wasn't minding your business. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the shit that happened in Alabama with the basketball player. You know, it's a confrontation, and it just so happened that guy shot the dude in, uh, yeah. with his girl. But we've seen it the opposite way that, yo, bro, you ain't minding your business. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of situations where you don't know the dynamic. That, dude, there was a situation where um, they got into it, and the woman shot the guy. Yeah. For, for like, inter, for intervening. I, as, look, as, as a as a young man, I probably could have got down with it because I was active enough. Uh, as a older man, as a father, you know, as a future husband, I, I I can't get involved. Can't. I will say, yo, my man, like, yo, chill. Yeah. Yo, and it, and it depends on what I got in the car. If I don't have nothing in the car, I'm probably calling the cop like Gavin. Yeah. If I got something in the car, I'll probably go to the car and then come back and be like, yo, chill. Yeah. Um, and if it, they're black. If it, they're not black. My, my, my. I, I, you, I mean, but you... Here's the thing, though, you almost have to because you know if you if you call like for one, I'm not standing on the scene. Nah, not right? at all. <laughs> so so I mean, you're not getting a statement from me. So it's like, yo, if if that is happening, like I mean, outside of like somebody having a bat, yeah, you know, like yeah, if you have a bat, I'm probably calling in immediately. But yeah. you know, if, but if it's just a domestic. You know, especially when I know the stats behind intimate partner violence. That, yeah. You know. The, Some of y'all get off on that the shit. The overwhelming majority of the time is actually being initiated by the person that you assume is the victim. Like, that's crazy to me. Yeah. You know, so it's like, you know, if, right. I, if I see it, like what Il just did, I can't say that that's smart. Yeah. You know, it's, it was crazy. Uh, I was working with a model one time and we had a great shoot, man. Everything was dope. It turned out amazing. And I remember a few months later, uh, I ran into her. Me and me and my wife are walking downtown. This is before we married. And I walk and I see her. And the way I look, I know this woman knows who I am. And this girl looks through me. And I was like, hey. And she looks through me. And I saw her man grab her arm. And so I waited a few more months. And I saw her on, on the internet. And she was living her best life. And I was like, yo, how you been? She was like, I'm good. I was like, yeah, um, I remember when I saw you downtown, she said, you couldn't tell I was getting my ass beat. <laughs> and I was like, what? He he just grabbing your arm. She was like, yeah, he just got finished beating my ass. Fuck out of here. She blocked me instantly. But, Nothing but, else. But again, though, how, look, look at what happened to Ildris. Yeah. Are we, are we supposed to put our lives at risk? Absolutely. You know, absolutely. I'm I'm with you on absolutely. Yeah, like, like, are we know, supposed to? Are, like, we, are, are, are we supposed to do that, right? And then I'm looking at her like, damn, bitch, you mad at me? And I didn't even know what was going on. I saw him grabbing your arm. But look, a lot of times when I cut through the club, I had my hand on my girl's arm or around her waist, guiding her through a crowd. And it was crowded out. I was like, you know what? I'm out of my fucking business, yo. Because y'all mans is crazy and y'all like you know crazy what? dudes. But see, and that's the thing. It's like, yo, I, I, think, I think that actually is like worth clipping. And like asking, like, yo, what do you do when you see a domestic altercation between a black man and a black woman? And 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 when men say, like, yeah, you know, look, I'm gonna intervene in the fact of like, I'm gonna be over here and be like, yo, y'all cut that shit out, yeah. right? But for me to come and physically put myself in between, like, I don't think we can say that, like, yo, men saying like, I can't really involve myself like that. I don't think we can really say like, yo, that's that's the wrong thing. Yeah, like. I don't, I don't, um, y'all tell us. Yeah, yeah y'all, y'all tell us. Like, what, <laughs> Il, what Il, is what Il just did the right thing? Like, did Il just Elba do the right thing? And ha, and ha, by and having a gun stuck in his face, 
did he still do the right thing? Yeah, they was gonna mess that pretty face up. I just saw him get shot on the wire today, right before I came over here. Yeah. Um, yo, I want to thank y'all for tuning in, for showing us love as you always do. For getting Mike back in the studio, we got some big plans. We are hosting, you know what I'm saying? We'll take two tables, three bottles, <laughs> and, uh, you know, actually, we need more than that. We need money, but you know how they go. Hey, big things coming, man. Hey, share this with a friend. We can only grow if y'all share us, man. Absolutely. Please go and um, give us a Google review. Go give us a Spotify review. Absolutely. Give us a, we, need, we actually need reviews on um, iTunes, and that's where half of y'all listen to. So please, more than half. That's the crazy shit. Yeah, so please, like, go to the top. Uh, subscribe and then give us a review and we definitely appreciate that and look we only grow because y'all share us man so share us with somebody that thinks just like you hey it's, we prefer a review but if y'all don't do reviews we're gonna start taking up offering and, you know <laughs> we're gonna start taking up offering anyway yeah absolutely <laughs> we're gonna holler at y'all next time holler at your boy <laughs>